Well, Britain has one of the world's most famous clocks, but Big Ben, of course, stands loud and proud in London. But you have to wonder, did the UK actually forget how to tell the time? Brexit was supposed to happen last March, then it was scheduled for the end of October, and now, finally, here we are. Let's get more perspective on this. Michael Marillia joining us in studio for more. So, Mike, jokes aside, this really was a long journey for them. It seemed like a never-ending story, didn't it? Yeah, it sure did, uh, Sean. Uh, we we're uh, saying that it's time to go, but really the emphasis uh, is on time because they have taken their time. Strange for a culture which is so preoccupied with schedules, buses, trains, the tube, all of it's supposed to run on time. But let's get into it and we'll explore uh, how long this has actually taken and why I suppose a lot of British people are just so tired of it. So the clock for leaving the EU started, Shahan, almost uh, four years ago. And of course, we had that uh, famous referendum that was in uh, June 2016. Believe it or not, Shahan, it's been more than 1,300 days since that referendum in 2016. And we did the math for you, Shahan, 31,600 hours. That's how long that Britain has had to actually secure a deal with its European friends. And let's focus on Theresa May. She uh, was the Prime Minister who was supposed to take the UK into Brexit. Uh, of course, the deadline, as I mentioned, the 29th of March last year, Theresa May missed that deadline. I suppose she wasn't watching the clock uh, as we spoke about Big Ben. So they missed the deadline by more than 300 days, Shahan, and that translates into nearly 7,400 hours. We're now down to around about seven hours until Brexit actually happens. Uh, and just to put this whole thing in perspective, Shahan, missing that deadline by more than 7,400 hours. It's crazy. Yeah, so officially they say goodbye to the EU tonight, but it's more like see you later? It is more like see you later because uh, it's not so much uh, an exit per se, it's more a transition. So let's focus very quickly on that. And of course, our good friend Boris Johnson, who uh, has quite a reputation around the world, he's going to be in charge of this transition. As you said, that transition expires at the end of the year. So the 31st of December 2020, that's how long really Britain has to now try and secure a new deal with members of the European Union. We did the calculation, Sean, that translates into 335 days. And if you are counting down the hours, just over 8,000 hours. That might sound like a lot, but remember, it took four years for us to get to this point in the first place. And crucially, Sean, the 26th of November is another big deadline in this whole saga because European officials are saying that's when they need to have a trade deal in place. By, by the 26th of November, things need to be written down and in place so that, so that deal can come into effect in 2021. And just a quick note, Shahan, if things go terribly wrong, the whole thing breaks down. Boris Johnson has the option of extending this transition by another two years. So that would mean, Shahan, that our Brexit hangover would continue for <laughs> 1,065 days. I've already got a headache just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, so do I. All that drama, though, is somewhat exciting. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. Michael Marillia.